Alright, let's get it. Let's do this. Booyah. It's kind of dark over there. This lightens up. Alright, we live. We live. Welcome to True Hebrews United. The Lord Yeshua. Definitely give all honor to Yah, the only begotten, uh, and through his son, Yeshua Mashiach, the only begotten of our Heavenly Father. Definitely give honor to them. Uh, definitely give honor to all the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, and the deacons. Um, all of them and um, all the brothers and sisters across the whole planet. Once again, I definitely give respect for all the ministers out there. It takes a lot to persuade people to repent from your sins and to have faith in the Most High and to have love for the brethren. Because some uh, people, they will keep the commandments, but the love that it takes to love strangers, brothers and sisters that aren't their blood, it takes a lot. So they need to get out of their comfort zone and love the brothers and sisters like their own skin. I definitely give all the uh, uh, definitely give respect to all the brothers and sisters across the whole planet uh, going through whatever financial struggle, marital problem, um, death in the family, uh, kids, school, persecution with laws being passed, whether you're trying to homeschool your kids or vaccinations. A lot of stuff going on in a lot of different places on this planet. Definitely give respect to all of them and um, go from there. And then all the people trying to get in the body. I appreciate all the people trying to get in the body, um, reading this Bible, just coming to the Most High, or people just getting out of false churches, trying to do what's right, trying to do what's acceptable. A lot of this stuff is new. The Almighty's commandments, who the people of the Most High, uh, going filtering through all the lies that's been taught, building your foundation on uh, things with cracks and holes in it, with the tradition of men, with these false churches, these liquor store churches out there. Understanding that, hey, you know what, um, at some point, even me, I had to realize I don't even know how much I don't know. With all the years, 14, 15 plus years serving the Most High and me still finding more information, me still coming more into the knowledge of the Most High. And it's always ever growing. So I know where some people out there getting confused and everyone says they're right and everyone says they're in truth and everyone tries to condemn everybody else and whatnot and you find this information and this information and uh, truth mixed in with lies at the same time and it can get overwhelming but if you seek the almighty and keep the commandments he'll lead you and guide you to all truth we have to have faith in the holy scriptures and you'll get to your destination which is salvation you know so be faithful be uh all his commandments, keep them, and then you'll find where you need to be. So definitely thank um, all the people out there trying to get in the body. All Today we have your attention with the owner of the yellow bike in the lobby. Please remove it immediately. Okay. Once again, with the owner of the yellow bike in the lobby, please remove it immediately. That's thank you. Whack. But anyways, um, the owner needs to hurry up and repent too with the yellow bike. But um, so I definitely thank the almighty um, all you hypocrites out there, hey, every day is a chance for you to say, hey, in this condition, I am not saved. Instead of me just holding up this Bible and not being saved and still going to the lake of fire and receive a great uh, a condemnation, how about me do what's right and do what it takes to make it into the kingdom? Realize like, hey, how I'm treating my wife or how I'm do using the scriptures out of context, how I'm only using the scriptures to benefit me, but anything that crucifies the flesh, anything that promotes me to come up higher and live holy and live righteous, I don't want to adhere to it. You hypocrites out there, you ain't going to make it into the kingdom. You can use this Bible as much as you want to justify in, just about any sin you want. You want to use this to justify smoking weed. You want to use this to justify listening to rap and Hebrew rap or whatever. You want to use this to justify sleeping with a whole bunch of women and calling them a concubine. You can use scriptures out of context all day to justify wrong behavior. But that don't mean you're going to make it into the kingdom. It says don't add or take away from my word. Because those that add or take away, I'll take your name out of the book of life. So for all you hypocrites out there, today is a good day for you to acknowledge that in your condition you are not saved. And you need to make some changes in life. You need to acknowledge the same thing with growing in the most high and growing with yourself as a characteristics. You could keep the commandments because you realize, oh, I've been breaking the Sabbath. I need to do right. 
But at some point, you need to realize I'm not good with, I mishandle money. I'm not good with saving. I'm not good with balancing money and taking care of my priorities. And I find lacking and you need to come up higher. It should be a gradual growth because the scriptures give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding in all things. Not only things that pertain to salvation, but things that pertain to the world that we live in at this time. When you read Proverbs and Psalms, you could take that information and apply it to just about anything, whether relations, whether money, whether opening a business, whether if you have employees because it talks about servants and whatnot, whether correction your kids, all this stuff relates. So as we grow in the most high, you should grow as a person, your heart, your mind, your understanding, your maturity as a person, as well as as salvation. So um, for all that, that, definitely thank the most high. So with all that said and being done. Let's let the fingers do the walking and someone needs to type, let the scriptures do the talking. I think I see someone, but it's kind of far. But uh, so let's get into the book. So we're going to turn to Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17. And we're going to start at verse one, Luke chapter 17, verse one. Then said he unto his disciples, it is impossible. This is Luke chapter 17, verse one. It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him to that a milestone was hanged about his neck and cast into the sea that he should offend one of my little ones. So he's talking about the fences that is going to come from serving the most high. So I'm just paving the foundation. So let's go to another scripture. Matthew chapter 26, Matthew 26. And we're going to start at verse 31. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. And let's get it. It says, and after they had mocked him, they took, uh, wait up, Matthew, uh, that's not 26, 27. There we go. 26, verse 31. Then said Yeshua unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before uh, go, go before you unto the Gentiles. Then Peter said unto him, Though all shall be offended, because thee yet will I never be offended. And Yeshua said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times, thrice. But Peter said, Though thou should, I should die with thee, I would not deny thee. Likewise, they said all the disciples, and what happened, they end up doing exactly what the Messiah said. So he says, Hey, you guys are going to be offended for the word's sake. You're going to be offended for the word's sake. So John chapter 15, John chapter 15, and we're going to start at verse 18. John chapter 15, verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love you, love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So that goes to people serving the Most High because you are not of this world. Why? Because you don't eat the same things. You don't celebrate the same days. You don't go to the same places. You don't hang around the same people. You don't dress the same. You don't talk the same. You don't listen to the same music. You don't uh, watch the same movies. Your, your whole character, you don't deal with the same, you don't get road rates like the next person. You're not eager to, you don't steal, you don't kill, you don't gamble, you don't do all these things. So you're not of this world. You're not tainted by these traditions of man or the culture, especially you no know, Babylonian culture. And you're uh, t tempered and tapered to the structure of the Most High. You adopted his culture, his ways and his uh, thoughts and you walk it with the mind of Amashiach. And so just like they hated the Messiah, they hated you. So I'm just laying this foundation that offenses will come. Offenses will come. And I see too often that people are able to deal with the offenses that come from the world, whether uh, some a different camp comes or, or people on the job or situations come and you could deal with these offenses you know, they come, sometimes they come hard and it's hard to deal with it, whether you get laid off and whatnot. But you can deal with these outside offenses. But my question is for today, but what happens when the offense comes from the most high? Because I see that the majority of people on this planet can deal with offenses that come from outside sources. But what happens when the offense comes from inside sources? It seems that they have the hardest time to adhere when the offenses come. So let's keep going. Let's go to 1 Kings. First Kings, 
chapter 22. And we're going to start at verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 22, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass... And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down unto the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth Gilead is ours, and, it, it, and, we, and uh, we be still, uh, take it not into the hand... Uh, uh, out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramah Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said unto the king, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people. My horses are thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king, Inquire, I pray thee, the word of the Most High today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go to Ramah Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it unto the king of well, a, a hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Almighty besides uh, besides that we might inquire of him? So when 400 people say, Hey, all these prophets say, Go, go, go. And he said, Wait a second, this don't sound right. Is there another prophet? And so he says, And Jehoshaphat said, uh, uh, Verse 7, Is there not a prophet of the Most High besides that we might inquire? And the king said unto him, Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man. Micaiah, the son of Emma, but, uh, by whom we may inquire of the Most High. But I hate him, for he doth not pr uh, pr uh, prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. He says, there is one prophet, but I hate him. Now, why is that? Because he prophesied not good concerning me, but evil. He didn't like the offenses or the rebuke that came through this prophet. So instead of him adhering to it, what this prophet is saying, and the rebuke and the correction and the discipline that this prophet was giving him, he'll rather push him aside and just hate him. Now, if I'm on the job and I deal with someone hating me, I but man, shut your mouth. If you're not going to treat me with respect, don't address me at all. You stay on that side of the job side, I'll stay on this job side because uh, you raising your voice. And I can deal with the outside offenses, but I find too often that people, not myself, when offenses come from a brother or a teacher or a minister or the word comes your way, they don't want to take it. It's better for me to put up my wall than for me to receive that my deeds and my behavior is wrong, that I may come up higher and take part of the his fruits of holiness. So offenses will come, but before you get outside offenses for serving the Most High, you need to receive these inside offenses that come from the ministers of the Most High as well as the Word. You have to receive the inside before you can even take the outside because if you don't take the inside, you're still of the world. You need to repent. So let's keep going. He says, but I hate him. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 1. Matthew chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Let's get it. In those days, John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophets Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Most High, make uh, straight his paths. Or make, there we go, his path straight. So, the first thing when John the Baptist comes on the scene, he doesn't come, the Almighty loves you. I got blessings. He's going to bless you. He got many mansions. If it was not so, I wouldn't tell you. We're going to eat in the tree of life, and he's going to wipe away all your tears. Like we see in certain parts in Revelation, and the prophets talk about how good the kingdom, and he's going to shine in Jerusalem. There's going to be no more new moon or sun in Jerusalem because he's going to be that light, and we're going to be with him eternally in the kingdom. Yes, those are blessings of the Most High. Those are blessings of the Most High. Hopefully that camera lights up. It looks dark in the YouTube camera. So hopefully those are the blessings of the Most High. But no, he came and said, hey, you guys need to repent. Make straight your past. What you're doing is wrong. Get your life right. Correct that behavior. Stop doing that. Start doing that. He came with correction. He came with rebuke. He came with offending people. This is why when the Pharisees came to see his baptism, they was trying to find fault. They were trying to find fault. 
Are you this? Are you this? Why do you do this? Who gave you that authority? They came against John the Baptist simply because he was correcting them and offending them of their behavior. It's amazing to the same degree when someone cuts you off, blatantly cuts you off, don't use a turning signal, you have this gap, so if you have to slam on your brakes, you don't hit the car in front of you, and they cut into that gap, and then they slam on your brakes to where you almost hit them. So you beat their horn, and what do they do? They flip you off, as if you're the one that's being wrong. You beat your horn to repute, reprove a behavior in hopes that they're like, oh, dude, I didn't even know. I just cut that person off, man. I need to pay more attention to the road. No, that's not what they do. They stick their hand out the window and flip you off. And that's what you do to the most high when ministers come down your alley, when the word comes down your alley and it offends you and you take that personal instead of saying, man, this is the word. What well, is the word? Because you get caught up with the delivery and not get caught up what it's saying. Because I would rather offend you and you get mad at me and repent and you get saved and make it into the kingdom than me to not offend you and you die in your sins. You die in your sins. So let's keep going. Matthew chapter 4, next chapter, verse 14. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken to Isaiah the prophet saying, In the land of Zerubbabel, the land of Nephthalim. Oh, starting at verse 14, by the way. Chapter 4, verse 13. By the way, the sea beyond the Jordan, uh, uh, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people sat down in darkness, saw great light, and them which sat down in the region of the shadow of death is sprung up. From that time, Yeshua began to preach and say unto them, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He says, If you want to be saved, you need to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And from that time, he was offending a lot of people. He was offending a lot of people. There's one scripture I wanted to get, I didn't write it down. But he says, you must eat my blood and eat my flesh and drink my blood. And it says, this is a hard saying. Who can handle this? And a lot of the Messiah's disciples left him because they were offended. And he went to the apostle and said, will thou also uh, offend me? I might find that scripture at the end. I'll use my phone and find that scripture real quick. I will go faster. I'm going to find that scripture. So he said, repent. And people couldn't receive it. And I find that especially you new people coming to the gospel that's not baptized, you're not on the Almighty's payroll. And some of you guys that's been baptized, when a minister comes down your way, how is it that you could directly discipline your kid, but a minister can't directly discipline you and you get offended and take it personal versus, man, he came down my alley. But what was you doing was wrong? What, what? Well, yeah. So then why don't you repent? Oh, well, he shouldn't have said it that hard. You were doing wrong. Just repent. It's not that hard. So let's keep going. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Praise the Almighty. It's saying it's video has ended. Can you guys see me on there right now? Or no? Type something if you can. If not, then I'll. Uh, I'll redo it. All right, let's see if I can get back on live. Praise the Almighty. Sorry about that, YouTube. Bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, go from there. Praise the Almighty. So, it said the video ended. It said the video ended, so hopefully it went back on. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Praise the Almighty. I'm going to start at verse um, 9. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. It says this. This is, this is, uh, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, Children that will not hear the law of the Most High, which say unto the seers, look what they say unto the ministers of the Most High. Look what they say. Say unto the seers, say, uh, see not, and, uh, and to the props. So they say to the seers that have foresight, don't see. Don't look into the future. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, but prophesy unto us smooth things, and prophesy deceit. Don't prophesy the things that's right because you're going to condemn our behavior. 
but prophesy unto us smooth things, stuff that makes us feel good. Be a prosperity preacher. Prophesy stuff that makes us feel good. Don't prophesy unto us right things. We ain't trying to hear what we need to do right. We're just trying to hear things that comfort the soul, that please the flesh, that please the ears. That makes me hope in greater things, that the Almighty will bless me for disobedience. So let's keep going. Amos chapter 7. Amos chapter 7. And we're going to start at verse 10. Amos chapter 7, starting at verse 10. Then Amaziah the priest, look at this, uh, uh, Bethel sent unto Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel, and the lad is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall uh, be led captive out of their own land. And Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go flee away into the land of Judah, and eat and, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. So he says, hey, why don't you prophesy over there? Because you're prophesying we're going to be led captive. You're telling us because of our sins, we're going to be going to captivity. Don't prophesy uh, uh, right things. Prophesy, go, go over there and do it. Go over there because you're coming right down our alley. You're dealing with us. You're saying that all of us are going to get led captive because we disobeyed the most commandments and we uh, kept idols and, and we put, uh, put away his words and we did what we want to do and lived in wickedness and iniquity. And you're condemning our behavior. And because of that, you said judgment is going to get passed on us and we're going to go into captivity. So instead of us receiving that, how about you just go to Judea and prophesy over there? Because we don't want to hear it. Not hear it. We don't want to hear it. Look at that. And this is the same spirit that people have to this day. They say they want to be saved. They say they want to do the right thing. Preaching goes forth. They can't receive it. They get offended. Let's keep going. Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. Go, and we're going to deal with verse 1. Proverbs chapter 12. Verse 1. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. You brutish. A lot of you men out there is brutish because reproof comes. I know some of you women out there that study your word and you get exalted because you get a decent amount of revelation because draw an eye onto me and he'll draw an eye onto you. So you women out there that are zealous for the law, but you get to the point to where you can't receive reproof from a man. Well, you think, no, I get because I got so much knowledge on my own through self-studying. I don't need a preacher and thus you become brutish. I don't need a minister. I don't need a congregation. Some of you guys out there have that mindset. You don't need a congregation. You despise the reproof because you don't have a watchman for your soul. And because of that, no one can reprove you. You can't tell me nothing. I just get mine straight from the most high. That's a lie. That's a lie. I guarantee you every person that does not have a congregation how are you going to be the light of the world? How are you going to bring people to salvation? You can't baptize them because you're not a minister. Because there's only ministers that were able to baptize. And if you don't have a congregation, who baptized you? And then if you did get baptized by a minister, then why aren't you at that congregation? See how there's only one way. It's a, There's no way you could get saved without a congregation. There's no way. I'll just do my own thing. I know what I'll do. I'll just take a shower and that will just be me baptizing myself. Okay, go ahead. Let's see how far that gets you. So let's keep going. Give me Proverbs chapter 15. And we'll start at verse 32. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32. Let's get it. He that refuses instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth for proof getteth understanding. See, when you do not, if you despise correction, if someone, I'm a, I'm a harder preacher. I come and I preach um, like a John the Baptist or like um, Ezekiel or Isaiah. I come harder. If you read uh, 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 how they preach and how what they say, thus said the Almighty, Jeremiah came more tempered, came more reserved. But John the Baptist and some of these people came more aggressive. I come more aggressive. And if you get caught up with my delivery and not by, hey, this is truth. He's showing me scripture after scripture after scripture. This is true. 
Even though if I come and say, hey, if you want to break the Sabbath, you, you're going to lift up your eyes in the lake of fire. You ain't going to make it into the kingdom. You're going to burn. Or I say, hey, you know, if you love the Almighty, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if you love the Almighty, you're going to want to show your Heavenly Father that you love him and you'll keep the Sabbath no matter what. Because your love for the Heavenly Father supersedes you keeping this job. Either or, I'm still saying truth. Now, oh, well, I will keep the Sabbath because how he said it the second time, it wasn't as aggressive. But, oh, man, he coming down my alley or, man, his delivery on that. You know what? I'm going to continue to break the Sabbath. You're going to go to the lake of fire. Because regardless of how I bring it across the table, is keeping these false holidays right or wrong? It's wrong. So if you don't receive, oh, I don't want to watch him no more because he came too hard against me. Hey, so be it. So be it. At the end of the day, you're still keeping these false holidays and you're going to the lake of fire. It doesn't matter. Whether my reproach is aggressive or my reproach is more reserved, it doesn't matter. Truth is truth. Regardless, truth is truth. So let's keep going. It says that, hey, if you refuse instruction, you despise your own soul because you're going to the lake of fire. You're going to the lake of fire. Some people pick congregations just because they have a bigger choir. Or a bigger building. They don't pick it because the word. They don't pick it because, hey, this congregation is more truth. This don't have the huge crier. This don't have this or this has this or this. They don't get caught up with the truth. They don't get caught up with the word. He's a hard preacher, but he be in that book and what he's preaching is true. And that's the mindset we got to have. We got to get caught up in the word because the word saves us. 10, 20, 30 people don't save us. A big building doesn't save us. Doing all this stuff for the community don't save us. The word, the big choir, the, all that stuff, the, all the instruments, the you know the uh, the straight up uh, powerpoints that some ministers have and all that stuff that doesn't save you. The word saves you. We got to get caught up with the Almighty's word. We got to get caught up with keeping His commandments, His statutes, His judgments, His precepts, and His ways. Because at the end of the day, none of that stuff. When you stand before the Most High, He's gonna ask you how big was your congregation. Uh, did, did you have a good choir? You're going to get judged for every deed done in the flesh, whether good or evil. Your life is going to be on a scale and then the Holy Scriptures, and it has to be a just way and a just balance. Were you living righteous? If you were too light and righteous and too heavy in sin, you're off balance. You got to be living righteous. Super, no sin, all righteous, that makes a just balance. Oh, I'm just a little righteous and I'm a little sinner. That's not a just balance. Not inside of Almighty. Nope. It says all your righteousness will be on. If you're just a little bit of sin and you're a lot of bit of righteousness, that little bit of sin still outweighs. That little bit of sin is worth a hundred pounds, and your little uh, uh, and the, versus your thousand pounds of righteousness, bam, the sin still outweighs. It says if you leave the way of righteousness and go into wickedness, it says your righteousness will be remembered no more. Even though you have a thousand pounds of righteousness and you have a little bit of sin, it's like you have zero righteousness because it just outweighed it. All your righteousness be remembered no more. Be like you just a sinner, like you just all wicked. Look up in Ezekiel if you don't believe me. So let's keep going. Proverbs chapter 27. Verse 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. So right here, I need you guys to understand that. Open rebuke is better than secret love. When someone is reproving you, of a behavior is because they want you to do better. When you give your kids a spanking for stealing, for lying, for doing things they ought not, why? Because you want, because you just like hitting your kids or because you want your kids to do better. You know, you know I know I don't want my kid to grow up thinking it's okay to be a liar. I don't want my kid to grow up thinking, my child to grow up thinking it's okay to be a, a, a thief. I don't, I don't want my child thinking it's okay to beat up on women. I need to discipline this child because I want to do better. So what happens if a person doesn't want to receive discipline after discipline after discipline when you keep that, then you say, forget it. You want to be, you want to be dumb? You want to be foolish? I'll leave you on your own. That's what the Messiah did to the people. They said, I'll leave them as a reprobate mind. Go ahead. I'll have no restrictions. You want to, I'm trying to restrict you and discipline you and keep you on punishment and keep you on a leash or keep you confined to righteousness. I'll let you go. You just run into sin. Get ready to burn a lake of fire. Enjoy it for a couple of six years, 30 years. You want to go ahead and be a fornicator? You'll be a fornicator for a good 45 years. And pretty soon that little wee-wee ain't going to be able to get up like you thought it was. And guess what? You're going to the lake of fire. Oh, guess what? You got some AIDS. 
You want to go watch all these movies? You want to do all this stuff? Yeah, you go, go get you. You want to go run and chase all this money? You can chase all this money, but guess what? You're going to get to a point where you're 70, 60, 80 years old where you could have money, but you ain't enjoying all this money because you old. You in a wheelchair. And then guess what? You still going to live a fire. Or you could live righteous and have discipline and have restrictions. They had all the land they needed. They had castles and cities that they didn't build and vineyards and trees and or orchards that they did not plant. They had everything they needed, but hey, keep my Sabbath. Don't worship idol gods. Don't marry these strange people. Don't take on their customs or their ways and just keep my, keep my feast days. Live holy and live right. Treat your wife right. Treat your children right. Don't be homosexual. Don't be stealing stuff. Don't be a murderer. They, they had guidelines, but hey, it's free all this land. Yeah, have at it. Have fun. Chill under your tree and chill in the shade and take a nap during the day. Do what you want to do. Make some money. Do what you want to do, but here's your restrictions, and they couldn't do it. And the same thing with us. The Almighty's trying to bring us back to Him. Bring you back. Bring you back to the Heavenly Father, but people can't take open rebuke. Only if he preaches over, even if I, I don't use names, but even if I came down someone's alley and they knew I was talking about them, it's because I want them to be saved. Now, one time, like, I just like coming and crushing people. I don't. I was telling, we had a meeting the other day, and I told some, some, of, the, uh, some of the saints of the Most High, I said, it's not that I like arguing and getting upset with people. It's when we just willingly do things that's contrary to the congregation. We do things that hurt the congregation. And so then now, uh, what? Oh, it's okay. You're good hurting the congregation. You're good letting the congregation down. You, you're good. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Because I do my part not to let True Hebrews United down, not to let Facebook people down, not to let YouTube people down. I do my part to be faithful every Sabbath, give you guys all the scriptures to exhaust the scriptures, more than enough scriptures of what you need, because I'm not these little... Um, story time with Simon ministers where I use one scripture and I go 50,000 minutes and end it again. Hopefully you guys get back on. But, praise the Almighty. Bear with me, you too. Bear with me. Continue the experience. Alright, cool. Let's go to the live. Why does it keep cutting off, man? Praise the Almighty. Praise the Almighty. Bear with me. Bear with me. Um, praise the Almighty. Sorry about that YouTube. Bear with me though. Hit me up on the message and whatnot. So I do um everything, I do everything I can to give you guys as much scripture and be faithful to you guys because I want you guys to be saved. I want you guys to make it into the kingdom. That's my goal is that you guys make it into the kingdom. So let's keep going. So when when I come down someone's alley, Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Sorry, you uh, Facebook, it cuts off. It's out of my control. Matthew chapter 15. If it becomes problematic, I'll just record and load it up. That way we don't have no distraction, distractions. Matthew chapter 15, we're going to start at verse 1. Praise the Almighty. It says, Then came Yeshua and the uh, scribes and the Pharisees uh, were at, at, of Jerusalem, saying, Why do you, your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders and wash not their hands when you do eat bread? So they tried to deal with them on a behavior. It says, But he answered and said, Why do you also transgress? The commandments of the Most High by your traditions for the Almighty commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curses his father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, Who shall ever say to his father and mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou might be profited by me, and honor not his father and mother, shall be, uh, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of the Most High uh, of none effect by your tradition, you hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy, saying, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but in their heart uh, they are far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. So he called them hypocrites. 
Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defile the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defile a man. Then came the disciples and said unto him, Knoweth that the Pharisees were offended after they heard these sayings. They said, hey, the, the Pharisees got offended. They knew you were talking about them, and they got offended. But instead of these Pharisees repenting, they just put up their wall and didn't want to hear anything he had to say. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21. Praise the Almighty. And we're going to start at verse 42. Matthew 21, verse 42. Amen. Matthew 21, verse 42. Let's get it. Yeshua said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? This is the Almighty's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of the Almighty shall be taken from you and given unto the nation, uh, bringing forth fruits thereof. And whoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but unto whoever it shall fall, it shall grind him into powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he had spoken unto them. And when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. So it shows that these the Messiah came straight down these Pharisees' alley. They came straight down their alley and they offended them. And they had an opportunity to repent and do right. But they chose not to do it. A couple more scriptures. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Praise the Almighty. Amen. Yeah, I might just uh, do the um, do the recording again. If we'll try one more Sabbath. If it keeps cutting off, I'll just do the recording, and that way it just load one whole video. John chapter nine, verse thirty-one, because it also slows the YouTube down too. Because then they gotta bear with me. John chapter nine, verse thirty-one goes like this. Now we know that the Almighty heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of the Most High and doeth his will, him he heareth. And since the world began, it was not heard that any man opened the eyes that was born blind. And if that man were not of the Most High, he could do nothing. Then answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born of sin, and thou teach us, and they cast him out. And Yeshua heard that they cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Doth thou believe on the Son of the Most High? And he answered and said unto him, Who is he, that I might believe on him? And Yeshua said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and is he that talketh with thee? And he said, Almighty, I believe that thou, and he worshipped him. And Yeshua said, For judgment I have come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might not may be blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these things and said unto him, Are we blind also? And Yeshua said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But you say, but now you ye say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. Because they said they see, because they felt they had it together, and they don't want to receive reproof or instruction, it says your sin remaineth. And this is the scripture that it says, A, hey, when you can't receive rebuke, when you can't receive instruction, you despise of your own soul. So you people out there, when the word comes forth and it cuts the heart, let it cut the heart. Let it cut the heart. That way you might repent and do better and make it into salvation. Don't let the open rebuke or don't let these ministers are, are the word itself because the Almighty selected these ministers. We see a Jeremiah, if you see his mannerism, they call him the weeping prophet. He came real reserved, like an introvert almost, and he preached on to the people. And then you see like the Elijah, he came strong calling fire and brimstone, causing famine, three-year famines upon the people. He's killed 400 prophets. He killed the prophets of Baal. He came real aggressive. But regardless, you had to receive what they were teaching. Reg oh, well, you know, I like how Jeremiah, because Jeremiah's real laid back, but Elijah, he'd be calling fire and brimstone on people. He'd be praying that there's a famine upon all of Israel to where there's no food for all of us. What kind of prophet will ask for a three-year famine? Will pray to the Almighty for a three-year famine so we could starve to death. I don't, I don't want that prophet that caused fire or brimstone and brings famine upon the land. No, I don't want that. I want Jeremiah. I want the Jeremiah. Even though Jeremiah and Elijah was speaking the same word. John the Baptist came, not eating and drinking. What did they say? 
the Messiah came eating and drinking, what did they say? One has the devil, one's a gluttonous. It says wisdom is justified of the church. You can't please them all. They're going to get offended. And so you people out there, there has been times where I came down people's alley and they got offended, but hey, so be it. If I offended you because I said something that had nothing to do with the scriptures, hey, I will always apologize. If I made a joke, I'm like, oh, you weak. You know, just make a little joke or whatnot. And they got offended. Hey, man, I apologize. I was joking with you. But if you get offended because I'm preaching the word, so be it. Because the word is offensive. Turn or you burn. Repent for the kingdom of Almighty is at hand. If not, you're going to die in your sins. You're going to get everlasting judgment. You're going to go to the lake of fire. All this stuff is in the scriptures. The blessings and the curses. Just like Deuteronomy 28. The blessings of obedience and the curses for disobedience. Revelations. The blessings... There's blessings be in the kingdom, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, hell getting tossed in the lake of fire, everlasting content. All that's in the same book of Revelation, blessing and cursing. Same thing. So you got to receive it all. Let's keep going. Last scriptures, last two scriptures, Matthew 23, verse 37, Matthew 23, verse 37. Amen. And we're going to hit this real quick. Verse 37, 23, verse 37, it says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets, that stoneth them that were sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered the children together, even as a hen gathered her chicklings under her wings, and they would not, uh, and you would not. He's saying, look how many prophets I sent to Jerusalem, and you killed them, and you stoned them. Why? Because they were preaching the word, and they offended you. And instead of you repenting, in doing what's right, you decide to kill these prophets. You decide to kill these prophets. And that's what we have today. The word comes forth. Oh, yeah, man, I like this. this is a minister. This is a good minister. Oh, but, man, it don't take that much. Or, man, you don't got to do that. Or this and this and this. this. You're doing the same thing. You're just not killing. You're just not killing the prophet. You're not receiving what he's saying. And so what do you do? You put your wall up and you block anything else. Anything that appeals to your ears or that sounds good, you'll take. But anything that is 100% truth, but it crucifies the flesh and it has to cause you to make a change, cause you to maybe quit jobs or find new jobs or do certain things or treat people better or do uh, 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 come up higher in holiness. Nah, I ain't really, it don't take all that. I don't really, I don't see nothing wrong with me giving up this music, or I, I don't see why I got to wear dresses or this or be modest or not wear makeup and jewelry, even though the Bible clearly says that in the New Testament for women. But, oh, you know, it don't take all that much. It takes everything you got to make it in the kingdom. It takes everything you got to be saved. It says the righteous shall scarcely make it in, where said the disobedient unbelievers appear. It says if the righteous scarcely make it into the kingdom, Barely make it in. Where should the ungodly and the disobedient appear? Oh, it don't take that much. It takes everything you got to make it into the kingdom. I gave him up everything. There's a lot of stuff this flesh wants to do right now to this day. But I don't because I fear the most high. I fear the most high. I know hell, hell will be my portion. And I know it, it, it always remind me. This always helps me out. When temptation comes my way, I remember David. A man after the Almighty's own heart. A, day, a man after Almighty's own heart. He turned not to the right, or right or to the left all the days of his life. Said, "Be right the time, right? A righteous man. And the Almighty didn't give David a pass. He didn't give David a pass. A man after his own heart. And I don't even have that testimony. How's he gonna give Teacher Simon a pass and let me do something stupid? He didn't give David a pass." You think he's going to give the little teacher Simon a pass to go play around with sin and think it's going to be okay? That's not even worth it. I'm good. I'm good. Ain't no temptation worth me getting outside the will of the Almighty for. Ain't no temptation worth it. I'm good. I'm good. So, last scripture, Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. And we're going to start at verse 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still talking against thee by the walls 
and in the doors of the house, and they speak one to another, every man to his brother, saying, Come, let us pray, let us hear the word which cometh from the Almighty. Come, let's hear the word. That's a pretty good thing. Hey, let's go to service, let's hear the word, right? And they come unto thee as a people cometh, and they sit before thee as a people, and they hear their words, but they will not do them. For, the, uh, for with their mouth they shew much love, just like we read it, like the book, well, as Isaiah said unto you, the people come at me and love me with their mouth, but the heart is far from me. So for, but for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after covetousness. Lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument and hear thy words, but they do them not. And when thou comest to pass, lo, it will come to pass. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. You're going to know that teacher Simon preached the word unto you guys. Whether you receive it or not, a teacher has come and showed you the way of righteousness and the way of truth. Whether me or some other teacher has come your way and tell you what does it takes to make it into the kingdom. So, I see this all the time. Even some people, I'm going to have to send a text message. Because they ask me for scriptures here, ask me for scriptures there, and I send them what's not. You know, text me through or call and what not, talk to me, fellowship. No problem. But at some given time, it's like, you need to find a minister. You need to find a congregation. Because you're not going to have a toll-free, free access to scriptures for stuff you don't know. So you go to a minister, but you don't want to be a part of a congregation. The reason why you're going to a minister is because you need a congregation. The reason why you need scriptures for certain situations and dilemmas you're going through, because you need, you need fellowship. You need not only a minister, but other brothers and sisters that have your back. And so you're not going to circumvent the will of the Most High by keep contacting Teacher Simon via text message or phone. And as pretty soon I'm saying, hey, you need to go talk to your pastor. You need to go talk to your elder, your bishop, your deacon. You need to go talk to, to whoever's over you, who, whatever watchman you have for your soul. Because you're not going to keep call. I have no problem helping. Call me anytime, 619-501-1375. That's the congregation phone. You can hit me up with Messenger. You can hit me up on WhatsApp. I'm here for you 100%. But at some given time, you need to say, Almighty, I need a place to plant myself. I need a congregation. I need some brothers and sisters that have my back as willing to love me to the same degree that the Almighty says to love me. And that I got to be willing to love them to the same degree that the Almighty tells me to love them. The brothers and sisters in the Most High. You need to find a place to plant yourself. Don't be these people, like it says, they come and hear the word, but as soon as something, oh, I like that word, like especially you guys, oh, you can have more than one wife. Oh, you know, uh, I gotta uh, repent, I can't, I might have to quit my job for the Sabbath, but we in captivity, and the all, Almighty understands that, you know, so I gotta work to feed my family. But I like the, like, yeah, of course, anything that pleases the flesh, you wanna jump into. But when it comes to stuff to crucify the flesh, when it's stuff that, uh, oh, oh, you can have more than one wife, and I can do this, and I, all that pleases and finds the flesh. But when it comes to living holy, living righteous, when it comes to, hey, you need to be able to financially support these, well, oh, well, you know, ah, well, ah, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna receive that. I'm not gonna, oh, when it comes to, hey, how you dealing with your wife is wrong, or how you dealing with your husband is wrong, or, hey, you need to start doing what it takes to uh, leave an inheritance to your children's children. Hey, you need to stop eating that pork. Stop celebrating these holidays. Hey, when you work on a holiday, don't be safe taking that extra pay because you might as well celebrate and leave that stuff. Hey, I'll work this day for straight pay. I don't want no extra pay. I don't want your pagan pay. Take your pagan pay away. I'll just do it for straight. It's a normal day to me. I keep the most high, I live holy, live clean, and live separate. You got to be able to stand. When it comes to, oh, you need to get out of Babylon, oh, well, you know, I don't, uh, oh, well, well. But all the other stuff, oh, make it into the kingdom and be saved? Yeah, I like that part. Come out all my people out of Babylon? Well, you know, Almighty understands, and I don't want to discipline myself to save up money to get my passport. I don't want to discipline myself to save up money to find out what plays. I don't want to discipline myself to find out a congregation I'm going to be at. When it comes to every single thing else, yeah, you want to appeal to it. So that's why it says, hey, they say, come. It says, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. Uh, for the people that just tagged on, Ezekiel 33, starting at verse 30. I'm going to read this because you guys came on in the midst of my conversation. So, and it says, Also thou son of man, this is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 30. Also thou son of man, the children of the people are talking against thee by the walls in the door of the house 
and they speak to one another. Every one of his brothers saying, come, I pray thee, and hear what the word that cometh from the Most High. So they come to Ezekiel. He says, they're speaking against you, but they're coming. Hey, let's go hear Ezekiel. Check this out. And they come to thee as a people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, as my people, and they hear their words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after covenants, goes after the flesh. It goes after the flesh. Let's keep going. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song, as one that play, uh, have a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For thou, for they hear their words, but they do them not. They do them not. Whenever it, whenever the word comes and offends and crucifies the flesh, it says, "Be a sacrifice. Be a living sacrifice." The apostle Paul says, "I die to myself daily. Every single day, there's things this flesh wants to do." When someone cuts you off and you want to drive ahead of them and cut them off, it says render not evil for evil. But your mind, your flesh wants to, man, I need to recompense this person for what he did to me. You know, I want to beat my horn. I want to follow this guy. Some people follow him, road rage or whatnot. And every single time when situation happens, this flesh, it could even be something where your son does something and you want to deal with them right away. But you realize I am way too hot to deal with my kid right now. I have to deal with them. 15, 20 minutes later, let me cool down, then I can discipline him correctly. Because he doesn't want me to discipline him in my wrath. Just like the Almighty, when he unleashes his wrath, we went into Babylon for 70 years. We got our kids ripped apart, mothers ripped apart with the kids, and we got sawed asunder. We got raped, we got demolished, we starved to death. Some of us had to drink their own urine and eat their own children. When the Almighty dealt with us in his wrath, we don't want to feel that. This is why it says, despise not the Almighty's chastisement. Because if he comes with wrath, you ain't going to be able to receive it. Can you imagine if you're to the point where you're a mother and you're eating your own children? Just think about that. The Almighty prophesied, I will put you in a place where you will eat your own children. Because you guys don't want to take this chastisement. Get a little spanking, get a little put on punishment. Can't watch TV, can't get your little Xbox. He puts you on your little punishment. He chastised whom who he loved because you kept being a reprobate and you got offended when the offenses come from the Most High. You didn't want to listen to my prophets that came. You say, prophesy smooth things. Don't prophesy right things. Go to Judea to prophesy because you couldn't receive it. So I'm going to deal with you with my wrath. And so right now we have this time. This is the time that we need to repent and do what's right. This is the time you people out there need to find a congregation, need to find a home. This is the time when offenses come, when the minister preach the gospel. The Almighty has raised up these ministers to preach the gospel, say, hey, this is what the word's saying. This is what the Almighty wants us to do. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to repent from sin and pick up holiness and righteousness. He wants you to live clean and separate unto the Almighty. He wants there to be a difference between the people of the Most High and the rest of the whole world. Our laws and our commandments and our statutes was different from every heathen across the whole planet when we occupied Israel. They, they said they should say, what, what other nation has such righteous laws as this nation? We are different from every other nation on the planet. And now we are in the new covenant. He's saying, hey, be in the world, not of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Be not conformed to this world. He's saying, hey, you need to be different. So many Facebook women dressed this, showing just as much cleavage, just as much makeup, showing their silhouette, saying they're wearing a skirt, but it's all tight. So modesty is covering silhouettes. That's what modesty is. Covering your silhouette. So if you're saying I'm wearing a dress and I'm not wearing pants because pants won't see you to the lake of fire, unmodesty will see you to the lake of fire. This is what it says, modest. Women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So I teach women can't wear pants because pants are tailored to show a woman's silhouette. You look at a pair of men's pants, you look at a pair of women's pants, they got curved, they show the camel toe, they're tailored to show your silhouette. So thus they're not modest, not the pants itself, the unmodestly dressing. So if you wear a dress that's super tight and it's showing all your, your silhouettes, hey, if you're wearing a dress and it's loose and hey, you just got a body, so be it. You tried, hey, you can't hide uh, me. I'm a long sleeve shirt. I can only hide so much, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to wear a shirt that's over a, a 3XL shirt, you know, I'm in a long sleeve shirt. You can still see, hey, it's so be it, you know what I'm saying? But I'm covered, but I'm not wearing no skin tight shirt at the same time. I mean, the modesty commandment is for the woman anyway, so whether I wear a white beater or whatnot, 
you know, the, that's not a commandment for men. So the same thing, hey, we got to live holy. We got to live right. When the proof comes, do what's right. Do what's acceptable to the most high. Do what's acceptable to the most high. Some of you, well, I know this sidetrack, but if you want a good dude and you advertise in whore, showing all this skin, and you wonder why you can't, look what you advertise it. You want a holy man? They're, a holy man is going to look for a holy woman. If it, me, if I'm looking for a woman, I want a woman that's going to dress my, I want a woman. I don't want a whore. If you want a guy that just wants a good time girl, hey, dress like a good time girl. And wonder why your marriage ain't going to last because, hey, after the vagina got worn out and he got his fill, that's what's holding the marriage together. Next thing you know, another, oh, taking all these pictures on Facebook and YouTube and all the Instagram, oh, we're together. Six months later, forget him. He's a dog. Oh, we're separated. I'm moving on in life. Hashtag uh, me, fit life, all that stuff. So, go ahead, set being done. Keep standing. Don't drop standards. Hit me up. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, uh, phone number 619-501-1375. You can also hook up the uh, the sisters or the brothers. Uh, shout out to the brothers and sisters in Belize. Uh, shout out to the uh, brothers and sisters in uh, uh, UK, in Canada, San Diego, uh, Texas, and in New York. Um, thank you for sharing and liking the videos. I love you. I want you guys to do what it takes to be saved. If you need any uh, information or scriptures, hit me up. 619-511-1375. With all that said, being done, keep standing. Don't drop standards. Get the almighty hand clap. Shalom.